Welcome to Adam makes a video that he should have made somewhere else like three hours ago and it's totally not scuffed and I'm totally not, I totally don't have my laptop just sitting on my lap and every time I move it totally doesn't ruin the shot. So I totally forgot to talk about privileges and immunities and the worst part about that is that this is the one thing I am most concerned about for the test. So oops. <laughs> so let's talk about uh, immunities real quick. Oh, sorry. Executive immunities and privileges, which are not executive immunities and privileges. It's uh, executive privilege period. No immunities. I guess he is technically immune from some stuff. So um, executive officers are immune from civil suits for damages for what they do as officers, um, but mainly the president is completely immune. Um, civil officer, sorry, other officers can be sued if they violate your constitutional rights, but the president can't. He is completely immune from civil suit uh, in order to prevent his time from being clogged with unnecessary lawsuits. He's not immune from criminal prosecution of any type, at any point. Any state can, in fact, arrest the president. Um, that's just true. I'm aware that that is, at this exact moment, for no particular reason, a somewhat controversial proposition, but it is a true one. Uh, so yes, you can't arrest, you can arrest the president, but you can't sue him for damages. He is not immune from civil suits for injunction. That's allowed. Um, he can be sued for things he did before he was president, and he can be sued for things he does that don't count as presidential action. So, if he shoots someone on Fifth Avenue, uh, unless they were, like, a terrorist, and he was carrying out a super-secret presidential secret agent mission, he can't do that. That's not allowed. That's, that's the executive immunity from civil suit. And then we have the executive communications privilege, which is basically that presidential communications can't be forced to be disclosed unless there is some extreme countervailing necessity. Um, criminal prosecution is a big one, but you need to understand that when it comes to diplomatic secrets and state secrets, almost certainly going to be protected. Now, of course, countervailing interests need to prevail here. So one question I had that was an example question was, okay, what if uh, Congress wants it? That's something the courts will take into consideration. If you have a question on that, you need to note that. But that doesn't mean they're going to win. There has not, as far as I am aware, been a suit between Congress and the president over whether or not the president has to disclose state military secrets to them. It also needs to be noted that his fears of making them public um, don't really count if he's just showing them to Congress. At the exact same time, one could very much and very reasonably argue, and probably correctly argue, that Congress is much more porous. Um, so he may only have to release them to a subset of Congress, a few members of Congress, whatever it is. But, uh, yes, pre all executive communications are protected by this, but the more higher level stuff is what's really protected. Um, yeah, but every executive communication is at least partially protected by this. Um, and yeah, uh, that's pretty much everything with presidential, uh, presidential privileges and stuff. I need to check the syllabus and see exactly what it's called. I think it's presidential. I think it's executive privilege. It's just the overall. All right. Thank you.